Uh, so we're here. I'm finally making this video. The video on Call of Duty World War 2's highly anticipated single player campaign. No idea why it's been highly anticipated because it's got Sledgehammer Games behind it. The same people who made Advanced Cutscene. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Um, with the inclusion of Kevin Spacey, who is now a child pedophile. But, you know, Sledgehammer Games, let's trust them. Let's trust them with um, one of the biggest games in history. Let's trust them with one of the um, biggest money-making games ever developed, Call of Duty. I don't know whose fucking idea it was at Activision to let Sledgehammer Games control this, but they done fucked up. Now, the campaign might as well be called The Sergeant's a Fucking Arsehole. Because all you want to do all the way through the campaign, you don't want to kill no fucking Nazis. You want to kill the fucking Sarge. This dickhead who's bossing you about, who's played by some fucking twat from Transformers, Josh Duhamel, I think. I wanted to just fucking friendly fire this twat all the way through the campaign. If you could legitimately kill him and continue with the campaign, I'd have shot this fucking twat in the first 20 seconds, listening to him for seven hours, which is roughly how long the campaign lasts. You want to put a bullet in your own brain listening to him. The other characters are very well written. I liked most of them. I just hated this dude. I absolutely hated him. Zussman and Styles were pretty funny to listen to. I mean, Styles is basically iDubbbz. iDubbbz makes a cameo in this game without even fucking knowing. Someone tweet at iDubbbz and tell him he's in Call of Duty World War 2. Just because you all know I love you so much, I've got a compilation of all the times the sergeant is a fucking grade A wanker, and I thought I'd shut up and let you enjoy this little compilation. You see wings on me, Private? No, Sergeant. That's because I'm not your very fucking godmother! You better leave while you can still walk. Davis told me it wasn't your fault. You were only trying to do right by your platoon. Get out. Get out! I'm not going anywhere. I said get out! Ugh! 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 God damn it! This ain't the time. To turn. To turn. To turn. You lucky son of a bitch. Always first, All right? Keep eyeballing me. Yeah, get your jollies tonight, boys, because tomorrow when that convoy comes through, you're gonna be on the front line defending it. And Turner's not gonna be there. Easy. Easy. You're corporal now, huh? You know, see how fucking easy it is. Go. Give me an excuse. Yeah, that's what I thought. Six years I served with them. Six. Merry fucking Christmas. Now, trust me when I say this. That is literally a sneak peek of how much of a fucking douchebag this man is. Now, I know that the war changed people. It made people ignorant and nasty and people were shell-shocked. But this is a game. They could have made it slightly better. They said they wanted to go for realism, but they got the uniforms wrong. They failed to show swastikas in multiple places, but they make this dude such a fucking douchebag. It's just unplayable, this prick. Honest to God, I've never hated a campaign character as much in my life. And there's no character in this story that stands out like Captain Price, like Soap, like Ghost. No one. Everyone in the campaign is just passable. Zussman is the most likeable character. And you find yourself strapped away from him most of the time. And every time you do enjoy talking to him, it's in a fucking cutscene! Cutscene this! Cutscene that! Cutscene fucking everywhere! Sledgehammer! What the gameplay? There's nothing unique about the gameplay. The newest thing they've added 
is each squad member now has a unique ability. So Zussman you can request med packs from because you don't automatically regenerate health in the campaign anymore. You have to use med packs to regain health back. Other squad members give you grenades. Um, the sergeant can spot enemies from afar. But these are only usable like once every 5 or 10 minutes. The circle as you can see next to the person's face is how often you can use the ability. And um, it's a quite welcome change but it's nothing groundbreaking that Call of Duty actually needed. It's 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 quite mind blowing that Sledgehammer said this was going to be a a new a new Call of Duty and something brand new that's never been done before. It's still worse than Call of Duty World at War. The campaign is nowhere near as good at World at War. They've tried putting some moments in copy in World at War. Like in World at War where you're escaping from the Germans when you're the sniper with Reznov and you jump out the window, roll on the floor and then all the Germans come running up to you. Exact same moment in this. Exactly the fucking same. Shame I didn't have it recording at that time. Exactly the same fucking moment. You then get surrounded by squad mates and they kill the Germans. <coughs> is, no one, is no one checking that you've not copied other fucking developers like Treyarch? How can Treyarch compliment them when they've stole so many elements of Treyarch's like signature campaign moments but done them worse? Oh, the back! The ridiculously over-the-top Michael Bay-esque moments. Oh, they're here in abundance. They are here in abundance for a game that tries taking itself so seriously with the storytelling. It just overshadows itself with the ridiculously hilarious driving moments they've got where your jeep seems invincible, nothing can destroy it, you can drive into a fucking tree, it'll just take the tree out. Massive oak tree, 20 foot tall, don't make a fucking difference. You're in this little jeep, it's fucking stronger than that. And tanks magically miss the bullets, then you get all these big bang blowing explosions at the side of you. It's just fucking Michael Bay. When the credits rolled at the end of the campaign, I was expecting to see, directed by Glenn Schofield, Michael Condry and Michael Bay. But to my amazement, there was no Michael Bay there, so I'm pretty sure Michael Bay will be filing a copyright strike on um, Activision and Sledgehammer because they've basically ripped off Transformers films. Now, they may say they've got an excuse because they've got one of the main actors out of Transformers playing the dickhead sergeant in this, but it's just a Michael Bay movie gone fucking wrong, and Michael Bay movies are shit anyway. I mean, look at this. Look at this, boys. The scripting is unreal. This is a moment in the single player. You cannot shoot the sniper's nest because the fucking rockets just fly right above it. Angry Joe pointed this out in his review and I thought, surely fucking not. I'll test it. You cannot shoot it. Every bullet you shoot at it goes straight up. The Call of Duty's ridiculous scripting moments. Oh, oh no, no. We, we can't let you damage that wall. Even though he says, suppress it with fire. I thought, I'll think ahead. I'll get me Panzer Shrek tart and I'll, I'll destroy it that way. No. You're not allowed. No. <laughs> now this one, I really had to dry my eyes because I was I was crying with laughter. So uh, another another car chase, but you're chasing a train, and yep, somehow a car back in the 1940s is catching up with a fucking train, and 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 sure as shit you go faster than it at one point, and then oh, Michael Bay moments arise again. Someone throws a stick grenade, you throw it out, then the car crashes, then the train fucking. Flips up, goes everywhere, carts are flying everywhere, but somehow manages to miss you. How are they getting a pass on this bullshit that happens every single year? Michael Bay moments where they're not wanted. There was no moments like this in fucking World War 2. We promised the campaign would be so historically accurate. Yeah, I'm sure a train came off, all the carriages went flying everywhere. The carriages were knocking over German buildings, all the German soldiers were dying, but my soldier managed to be unscathed. I mean, just, just look at this set piece for yourselves. Daniels, where the hell are you? I'm coming, hang on! 
Now, the best part of the game, believe it or not, is the, quite frankly, poorly designed stealth missions, but they're where you have the most fun, because the rest of the game is literally just Michael Bay moments, explosions here, explosions there. This is one of the stealth missions, you have to sneak through his base, find a watch point, you have a few choices, again, nothing open world, but it gives you a little bit of freedom. You have a choice to go to three different watch points, and you can kill the uh, commander on the way which I tried doing multiple times but when you're not playing on recruit the game is quite challenging one thing I can throw Sledgehammer's way is they've upped the difficulty definitely a lot with the new health system um, how the characters work and you're not going to find this as easy as previous Call of Duty's um, especially if you play on um, veteran fuck me that is a very hard very hard and I couldn't even do it in that I finished the campaign on hardened which was quite challenging nothing ridiculously hard to do I mean some missions took me three or four tries which is what I want I want challenge from a game which is meant to be set in World War 2 not just ridiculously easy Michael Bay moments if you if that's all you want play on recruit and you'll just it'll feel like you're in a Michael Bay film and another annoying thing now this may just be me but you get promoted to a corporal in the single player but yet you find yourself still taking orders off people who are fucking privates is that how the army works? You get promoted, then you just say, Private, what do you want me to do? Follow me! Follow me! It's like, why have Call of Duty never understood this? It seems like in every Call of Duty game, you go through the full campaign being a private, but yet you achieve more in the war effort than the fucking sergeant and the commanders and everything, and yet you're still a private. In this, you get promoted, but then you continue to take orders off people who are lower ranked than yourselves. And that is just fucking annoying. I thought, with myself progressing up the ranks, maybe they'll give me a little bit of freedom to boss other soldiers about. Nope! None of that. The same typical Call of Duty fashion. Uh, you've got one tank mission, a couple stealth missions, and the rest are just Michael Bay action. Shoot, 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 progress. Gallery, shooting gallery. Shoot, 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 progress. And it's not... Oh, your teammates don't do shit. They do not do shit. You have to kill every single soldier on that specific level to progress forward. Your teammates just stand there like goddamn fucking dummies. They do absolutely nothing and contribute nothing gameplay-wise. They're literally there to talk. That is all they accomplish. I do have to say I am pretty disappointed. I expected something amazing from single player after throwing so much criticism at the game and getting so much hate off the COD fanboys. I wanted something to be in their favour, but the game is just overall okay. It is not worth the money. No fucking way is this game worth the money. There's one map on zombies. I don't care what anyone says in the comments. There's one fucking map. There's nine multiplayer maps. Um, two more if you include the war maps. Whereas other Call of Duty is launched with 15, 16 multiplayer maps. And the campaign is nothing special. There's no choices. Like, I don't understand where Call of Duty went. In Black Ops 2, you could approach missions with multiple choices and multiple different endings. Then Black Ops 3 got rid of that and put it back to a more linear style. Advanced Warfare, cutscene warfare it might have been called, this continues here. Gameplay is the same as goddamn World at War, nine years later, with the addition of health packs and being able to call for unique abilities from your teammates, which barely make any fucking difference, because you're not with the same squad mates every single um, campaign level. You're basically just doing the campaign levels on yourself, they don't push forward. The same as every other Call of Duty, you have to do the pushing, the killing, then they follow you and just, they're just glorified followers. They don't do anything apart from contributing their specific unique abilities. It doesn't matter how many AAA actors Activision hire to do Call of Duty, they just seem to be getting worse and worse and worse. And the only way they're selling it is by saying, oh look, look, we've got this actor, we've got this actor, we've got that actor. It doesn't make a fucking difference. The campaign is still shit, so you've got one tank mission, which is it's worse than the Call of Duty World at War tank mission. Yet again, the stealth missions are nowhere near as good as the World at War one. The World at War sniper mission is personally one of my favourite missions ever. And then the all gillied up mission in COD 4. It doesn't even come close to those games. And those games are 9 and 10 years old. It's just making me sad to be a Call of Duty fan. Being a long time fan of the franchise since Call of Duty 2 Big Red one. Probably more than anyone watching this video. I say these things out of love for the franchise, and I really wish they'd never let Sledgehammer Games make a game. And every single COD YouTuber who praises this game, they haven't even played the single player. 
I'll bet my money that Drift and all these others don't even play the single player. They just jump straight into multiplayer and continue sucking Condry's cock on Twitter. They keep tweeting at Michael Condry every single day saying, Oh, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Look at all the stuff you've put in the game. Don't mention none of the broken shit. Even the single player had so many glitches. I just couldn't record because they were just too goddamn funny. I mean, as you saw, going upstairs, that dude ran through my fucking ass and managed to crawl through me. But I guess that's, that's what you expect in a Call of Duty game. It's a small linear experience and a shooting gallery like the last three have been. I can say one thing. The campaign's better than Ghost's campaign. Congrats. Congrats, Condry. You've beat the worst Call of Duty game to ever be released. Apart from Infinite Warfare, I've not played that game, so I can't I can't critique the single player in that. People were saying single player in that were good because it had, it had Kit Arrington in and Conor McGregor for a whole 20 seconds. But if you want my honest, wholeheartedly advice, if you're thinking of buying this game for the campaign and you're wanting a raw take on World War II, this is not it. There's one mission which hits home and it's the last mission. Uh, Zussman, uh, mate, spoils head, click off now if you don't want spoils. Zussman, which is your best friend in the game, and your real best friend, gets um, kidnapped by the Germans and he's a Jew, so he gets put to work in the concentration camps. You find him, he's gone anorexic, and you look around the concentration camp for a whole of two minutes. Then you chase down the dude who's took Zussman, you shoot him, he dies in one hit, doesn't say anything, and that's the end of the fucking campaign. Honest to God, that is it. That is the game. All the way through the game, you don't feel like you're working towards anything. They don't tell you enough about Hitler, uh, what the Nazis wanted to do. It's literally just a campaign for America. America here, America there. They don't show any other nation apart from the French Resistance and the English in one stealth mission. One mission. And then you never see anything from them again. The campaign has let me down a lot it is just it's just awful it is a shooting gallery with michael bay moments of just blowing up and, and the explosions aren't even that good they're nowhere near as good as battlefield and i think battlefield one's probably one of the worst battlefields that's ever been released and i'd still rather play that game than this so if you're of my honest opinion don't buy the game unless you're a massive 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 zombies fan and all you want to suck Condry's cock then then go ahead um let me know in the comments what Call of Duty World War 2 video you want me to do next. I'm thinking it'll be something on zombies, like gameplay-wise. Because that's the only game where I can find myself slightly enjoying. I enjoyed the campaign for a whole of an hour. Just because I liked Zussman and Styles and I Aiello. But the rest of the characters, just bang. You want to shoot yourself. They're just so goddamn boring. If you enjoyed this review, guys, smash that thumbs up. Um, again, let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. My last two videos will be on screen now. Check them out if you haven't already. And I will see you all when I next upload. It should be tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Follow me on Twitter and all social medias if you haven't already. I will see you all later. Peace. Now I'm jumping out of Bentley, yeah And I know I sound dramatic, yeah But I know I had to have it, yeah For the